Guys, first of all, let me just say sorry that this video is a little bit late. Life kind of took over, and on top of that, I voluntarily took uh, like two days off from figure skating, and I came back to all of this. So let's just talk about it. Four days after we heard the first murmurs that Kostonaya was going back to Team Tutberitze, finally confirmed through, you guessed it, a first channel interview. News footage with interviews and everything. So if anybody's getting flashbacks to, you know, Jenya's situation, this one's a little bit more different because instead of just kind of saying yes, it's true, it felt very much like a statement of like, I was wrong and I'm sorry about it. And there was like an added little oomph of bow your head down and admit defeat <laughs> situation. At least that's the vibe that I got. And I mean, the differences of the Xenia interview and the Kostonaya interview. Like, in that same interview with Xenia, I'm just remembering, it took Berita shade at Kostornaya. They told her, why did you clap for Evgenia? And she was like, she deserved clapping because she was respectful to the Federation. She knew she wasn't ready, but she still skated, unlike others. She was referencing Kostornaya, who pulled out of the free. <laughs> Which is when it was ready to clap for Evgenia. I'm just realizing this. Oh my god. Like, it was such framed as like a joyous occasion. They showed them laughing together, posing for the official statement on Twitter. That was not the vibe at all with Costornaya's interview. It was very much repent for your sins that we were getting for Costornaya. There was only like half a second of them interacting and they weren't even looking each other in the eye. Tutberitsa and Costornaya. One channel was very much not just of like, yes, it's official it was more of like yes she's back and this is what she has to say for herself but she didn't even get like an official like post on instagram either from team tutperitze or from eteri herself because she's not actually back back she's on trial she's on a two-month trial where she needs to quote unquote prove herself and so essentially she has two months to get everything together terry says she must fully enter a process without any additional days off without conditions that someone is interfering on the ice or that there are a lot of people on the ice probably we are the ones who should define conditions and of course she needs to get her 3a back in those two months so that's a lot of pressure <laughs> this, I'm, again this girl is just has gone through so much but this is just another, to use Terry's words herself, this is one of the circles of hell she must go through. And I am 100% certain this is all just heightened desperation that is being fueled by her last chance, she thinks, to get to the Olympics. Because next year is an Olympic year and everybody's just going crazy, honestly. So yeah. Costornaya is on a two-month trial period, which is why she probably didn't get the official post on Instagram, but rather a four-day late. Almost, it felt very much like, look who's laughing now. I got that energy. Like, they made her, they read her words to her and made her eat her words and say, yes, I was wrong. Remember how we talked about her statement of, I smile more often at Plushenko? They literally read it out to her and she had to say, yes, I smiled more often then, but maybe Maybe I was smiling at the wrong times. Like there was an added level of humiliation. Even the shot of her like being in a dance class with all these little itty bitty Tutberitza students is very much poignant because of her statement that one of the reasons she left Tutberitza was because she didn't want to share the ice with people who were born like in 2010. I don't know if this is going to be her daily routine, having to train with these little kids, but the fact that you even showed it on television was very much like, remember that she said this as well? And Tutberitza, it's just, it's a win-win for her because if she gets her to succeed again, and if she doesn't succeed, she can blame it on Plushenko and say, well, I gave her the chance. <laughs> the chance ordered by God. <laughs> like literally she said, it seems to me that God ordered me to give her a chance after all. I do not want to keep this thought in my head that I could have given her an opportunity. Then one is left with unfulfilled hope for the rest of her of their life. So she's out here looking like a saint and she said that her daughter it's very interesting that she mentioned her daughter because the rumors have been that if she accepted costornaya back she might also gain points with the federation in terms of like helping her daughter's career those are all rumors allegedly please don't come for me and she said that her daughter was you know became her personal lawyer and was saying you need to give her a chance mom like please give her a chance like you don't know if she can actually do it again like she was at the top of her game she was your prima when she she left and so she gave her the chance and now she looks like caring mother <laughs> uh sympathetic coach and if she gets costornaya to get her 3a back she looks like 
efficient and successful coach also. So it's a win-win-win when you look at it. They also made her talk about the fact that she was six in the Russian Cup final, and she says that it's not a failure, but it definitely shows that she can't motivate herself, which just makes me think like, you weren't by yourself, you went because of Sergei Rozanov, hot Sergei, and obviously you need more structure, you, need, you don't need one person telling you, you need three people, plus the pressure of having your competitor next to you doing maybe even better than you, for you to do your fullest every single day. And that is just, I must say, the pressure <laughs> that a Terry Skep has to be just fever pitch high. It must be insane right now, because even, like, let's let's go down the, it was very much linear up to Zagitova. It was like, Yulia, well, star was falling. It was very much clear that the successor was going to be Evgenia. Evgenia was honestly the last lady of Russia, or the last lady that I can think of, in the uh, last skater in the ladies' discipline, that had a significant period of time where she was just dominant, where it was obvious she was gonna win the competition. But when Evgenia started, started falling it was very obvious the successor was going to be Alina yes it wasn't obvious that it was going to happen in that specific way in an Olympic um, moment but it was obvious that Alina was going to be you know the heir of the successor and after that Alina wasn't consistent Evgenia wasn't consistent there was kind of a vacuum uh, a little bit there the juniors were still juniors so they didn't uh, compete but Alina ended up successful she took a quote-unquote pause and then the juniors turned seniors and everybody thought Trusova was gonna be the one but it was Kostornaya who became the next successor but even then it wasn't as linear because Sherbakova and Trusova got in there every once in a while and won and even Kostornaya Naya's period of dominance wasn't even an entire season because she wasn't even allowed to have worlds because of COVID. And honestly, at this point, I don't know if she would have won worlds because she was already about to turn 17 and she was already allegedly uh, injured. So we all assume she would have won worlds, but we don't know. So the seasons of which there is a significant queen of the ice are becoming shorter and shorter and shorter because there's just becoming more and more competition. You don't have to worry about one girl who's your main rival. You have to worry about all these different girls and most of them are at the Tuperitsa camp. So I don't know if that's maybe the pressure that Aliona was missing for her to train fully and give it her all. Because at Plushenko, she was very much, you know, just her and Sergei training every day if they could. And if she was motivated, I don't I don't know what were the conditions there. But at Tuperitsa camp, it's very much like work, 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 because if you don't do it, we got three other girls who can. And I think that <laughs> is very much what gets these girls. I mean, there's little itty bitties doing quintuplets, not quadruples, quintuplets in on the harness. And it scares me that the day the quintuplet might actually happen out of harness from one of these little baby tuperita girls, because it's just gonna, gonna be the whole quadruple versus artistic, technical versus artistic mess all over again. And, but let's get back to the point. That was a, a nice little rant. Let's get back to the point. So I don't know if you remember, I'm pretty sure I also caught this off the last video for time's sake, but Tatiana Tarasova had said when the rumors first began, began four days ago, that Kostornaya left Tutberitsa in a very horrible, loud way, and that she needs to apologize to the whole country for doing it such, which just once again proves to me that Kostornaya is going rogue all over the place. Meanwhile, Genia was planned because she did not say this about Evgenia's comeback. And I would say her leaving Ateria was even louder. Sure, it was during the transfer window, unlike Leona Kostornaya, which was outside of the transfer window. That was the whole mess of it. But it was still very much messier in terms of what went down afterwards. But at that point, it was Tatiana Tarasova who connected her to Brian Orser, and it was once again Tatiana Tarasova who pulled her back into a Terry. So she didn't have anything to say about Genia having to apologize to the whole country. But Kostornaya is now very much also branded a traitor and rebellious along with Genia. But honestly, even worse, because there's an added her against the Federation. Like, sure, the Federation probably was happy that she's back with a Terry because that might mean that there is another potential girl that will be able to take a spot of the Olympics if she gets well together. But it's also not like it was part of a bigger plan. It was just Kostornaya doing what Kostornaya wants. So... I don't know how this is gonna turn out. I don't think the two month trial period is gonna work out in Kostornaya's favor. I do not think she can get the 3A back. There's no amount of fear, training, and pressure that can make Kostornaya get her triple axle back in two months, especially at this age and after she's had coronavirus and her body's just 
wrecked with injuries. I just don't think it can happen. I really, really want to be proved wrong, but I don't think it can happen. And a lot of people are not taking the trial period seriously. A lot of people are saying like, yeah, she has a trial period, but whatever. Like she's, she's essentially back. Even if she doesn't get it, she'll just dance and shows and Terry will get a cut of the money and everybody will be happy. I don't know guys. Like saying we'll give you an answer in four days was a power move. You know what's another power move? Kicking her out if she doesn't get her 3A and her form back in two months. I think that is very much a possibility. And we might very well hear that Kostonaya is retired. I really hope not, but I, I wouldn't count it out if in two months we say that Kostonaya is leaving, the angels of push um, oh my God, <laughs> I'm so not used to it. <laughs> it's leaving Tutberitze in two months because she couldn't complete her whole task in two months. I think that is very real and people are not, people are just accepting she's a Tutberitze girl and that's that. She's a Tutberitze girl when she gets posted on the Tutberitze page. <laughs> when she gets that official Instagram post, when she gets that 3A back, we will get that post. I assure you 100% that's what's gonna happen. And if we don't see that post, if we don't see that 3A back, I don't know if she'll just stay. I don't know. I think it is still very well a possibility that I might have to make another freaking video to keep up the chronic, the Costonaya Chronicles. <laughs> Oh my god, can we make that a TV show? The Costornaya Chronicles? What would be the theme song? Costornaya Chronicles, where is she now today? Hey, no? Okay. <laughs> like, oh god, everything can happen. And that's that, I don't really have much to say more than this. Like, she's back, let's see what's gonna happen. And hopefully her mental health and her physical health will be at a place sufficient enough to get her in form and get that 3A back. Because if she doesn't, she's very much right now the sixth girl in line, the sixth priority. Terry has now six seniors, six seniors. There's three places on the pedestal. And on top of that, it's an Olympic year. Guys, for all those people that are asking me to make a part two of Beginner's Guide to Team Tutberitze, I'm not making a part two until the Olympics, like post Olympics. Like once we find out what happened at the Olympics, I'm not making a part two because things just change so much that even the last freaking video that I did, which was Beginner's Guide to the different camps in Russian figure skating, which is mostly centered on ladies, is already outdated. <laughs> already outdated so i'm not making a part two to that until we get a finale which will definitely be the olympics the costanaya chronicles you know right now this is what you get videos about the costanaya chronicles and then another video for worlds and any other major competition so yeah that's those are my thoughts and i'll talk to you guys later thank you for enjoying whatever the heck this channel has turned into bye